Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, let's do this problem that says the rigid metal strip of negligible weight is used as a part of this electromagnetic switch. Determine the maximum stiffness K of the springs A and B so that the contact C closes when the vertical force developed is 0.5 newtons. Originally, the strip is horizontal, horizontal as shown. Okay, guys, so let's do this problem. Um, something I say repeatedly, sometimes you got to read the problem and notice that the picture that they give you is the original state. It's not really the final state or the state at which you should draw the free body diagram. So let's not get confused. The final state is going to look something at an angle like that right you're gonna have like the actually i drew this force the wrong way going up sorry about that the force is going up and we're gonna call this f of b force of the spring f of a and f of c okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the sum of the moments at B to try and find the relationship between F of C, I'm calling this F of C, and uh, F of A. So sum of the moments at B is equal to F of A times 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is the 50 millimeters. 50, I like to convert it into meters always. So sum of the moments here is F of A times that distance, 50 millimeters, so 0 0.05, minus F times 0 0.05. Now, and all of this is equal to zero. Now, this basically means that if you remove the 0 0.05, because there's zero at the other side, that F of A, this is F of C, is equal to F of C. Now, if we do the sum of the forces at y, we can find another relationship, which is that f of a minus f of c minus f of b is equal to zero. But you know that you know that um, f of c is also equals to 0.5 newtons actually. So we know f of a already because we have that f of c is 0.5 newtons given right here. And we can use, we can plug this in f of a right here and f of c right here to find f of b. So f of b is going to give you that is equal to 1 newton. Perfect. Now we have all these forces. Now, a couple of things to notice is that f of, um, f of b is bigger than f of a. You got to pay attention to this because when we're going to, I'm going to redraw the free body diagram and you always want to try and draw them as accurately as you can. That way, when you get the answer, you can see that your answer more or less makes sense with the diagram and you will know if you got the right answer or, or the wrong answer just by looking at the diagram. So you always got to try and draw it as accurately as you can. And this is a good observation for that. F of B is bigger than F of A, right? which means that the spring F of B is going to be more stretched than the spring at F of A because the force of a spring is determined by the stiffness times the length that it is stretched. So how, how bigger is it? If you look from this equation right here, you could also replace um, F of C for F of A since they're the same. And you will find out that f of b is equal to 2 f of a. So f of b is twice as big as f of a, right? So that means that the, the length that the spring is stretched is twice as big in b than it is in a. That means that, and let me lower the opacity to help you visualize this. Lower the opacity of this. It's going to help you guys, trust me. So it's going to look something like this. 
trying to draw it as good as I can. And this length, which is how much L, I'm going to call this LB, how much the spring was stretched at B. And this is how much the spring was stretched at A. And as you can see, trying to draw it as accurately as I can, LB should be twice as big as LA. And this is cool because this gives us some nice little triangles. We got one triangle right here. We got one triangle right here. And we got even a, an even bigger triangle right here, right? And these triangles really allow us to solve this problem. Now the angle right here and the angle right here are the same and I'm going to call them theta, okay? And I just, I'm just observing that they're the same. I'm not really going to find theta because they're not asking for it. And this triangle, I'm going to redraw it right here. And I'm going to call this length from here to here, which is at the point where it crosses the thing. I'm going to call this x. So this triangle right here with an angle theta has a length of x right here and a length of la right here. And then this triangle, I'm going to redraw it right here, which also has a theta. And the length from here to here is equal to 50 millimeters or 0.05 minus x. And this is equal to LB. So these two triangles have the same angle. That's the observation that you have to make, which tells us that the ratio between this and this and the ratio between this and this are the same. That's what the angle basically is. So x over LA, which is that ratio, is equal to 0.05 minus x over LB. But look what we found here. We found that f of b is twice as big as f of a. If f of b is twice as big as f of a, that means that KLB is equal to 2KLA, which means that if you kill the case because they're on both sides, LB is equal to 2LA, which is what I was saying before, that L, L of B is twice as big as L of A. So you could replace that over here. It's equal to 0 0.05 minus X over 2 times LA. So the LA is dividing on both sides, so you can cancel it out and check that out. You can figure out X because it's the only variable in this equation. So X is equal to 0 0.025, so it's 0 0.05 divided by 2, minus 0.5X. So if you solve for X, you're going to get that this is equal to 0 0.01667 meters. With this x, you can actually figure it out, the rest of the problem, because we have a third triangle right here, which is a triangle right here, and I'm going to redraw it down here. It has an angle theta, right? The length from here all the way to here, which is the length of the triangle, is equal to the sum of these two, which is 0.1 meters, minus x. And this length right here is simply 10 millimeters, which is 0 0.01. But the angle theta is the same. So that tells us that I can also relate it to this triangle and say, let me make a line right here, right out of space. X over LA, that ratio is equal to 0.1 minus X over, which is this, over. 0.01, but we already have x, right? x we found it over here, and we have la, which is the other variable. So that means that I'm going to plug x in and say 0 0.01667 over la is equal to 0 0.1 minus 0 0.01667 over 0 0.01. So keep solving. 1667 is equal to 0 0.1 LA minus 0 0.01667 LA. Sorry guys, ran out of space. Solve for LA, you're going to get that LA is equal to 0 0.002 meters. We already know that 2 LA is equal to LB. We don't have to find that really, but let's find it just for the sake of it. 
But okay, what do we do with this length? Well, the last piece is that, and since I'm running out of space here, I'm gonna go up here to the left right. f of a is equal to k, which is a constant that we're trying to find, times la. But we know f of a, we found it. We know that f of a is equal to 0.5 newtons. And we just found la to be 0 0.002 meters. So k times 0 0.002 is equal to 0.5. So solve for k and you're gonna get that k is equal to 250 newtons per meter. Let me rewrite it somewhere. k is equal to 250 newtons per meter. Made a mess of the board on this one, guys, sorry. So final answer for the stiffness that the springs need to be for this particular force and for this to make sense. Final answer.